Welcome to this installment of the Secure Your DNS, Secure Your Network video series. My name is Tim Rooney, Director of Product Management at BT Diamond IP, and the goal of this video series is to break down into bite-sized chunks the many ways that the domain name system, or DNS, can be attacked or manipulated for nefarious purposes, and to provide information to help you protect your network, your DNS, from such attack or manipulation. Today we're going to talk about DNS-based authentication of named entities, or DANE. DANE provides a way to help add protection to your transport layer security connections, in other words, your HTTPS connections. TLS is the successor to Secure Sockets layer, or SSL. It adds more robust security. SSL has been deprecated, so you should be using TLS now. And TLS encrypts data traffic, so between your web server and your web browser, and it provides data integrity and authentication of the connection endpoints. It uses X509 certificates, which rely on certificate authorities to issue and verify certificate signatures, which bind keys with the certificate entity. Now, your browser comes pre-programmed with a number of certificate authorities, and so that when you connect to various websites, those certificates provided by those websites roll up to those certificate authorities, typically within the CAs pre-programmed in your web browser. If not, you might occasionally see a request for adding a certificate when you're browsing to a given site. The issue, however, with TLS is that certificate authority breaches have occurred, enabling the issuance of certificates for arbitrary domain names. Some have been actually manipulated for some very popular domain names and historically as well. Now, what Dane does, it enables the domain administrator to certify the keys or their certificate authorities or their certificates that are used for those domain's TLS clients. So if I'm operating a website, I've got a certificate on my web server, and I can now add to DNS a corroboration of that certificate information, whether it's the certificate itself, the certificate authority, the trust anchor, as we'll see in a moment. This is done through the TLSA resource record type. So this, this enables you to specify the certificate authority, trust anchor, certificate, or public key used for that TLS connection. This can work with existing CAs or also self-signed certificates, as we'll see. And DNSSEC signing is required to prevent TLSA falsification. So you're relying on the TLSA record to validate what you're getting in the TLS handshake. So you want to make sure that that's authenticated through DNSSEC. DNSSEC, of course, provides that endpoint authentication that the information in that zone was published by that zone administrator as origin authentication. And it also provides the end-to-end -end data integrity to confirm that the data, the certificate information, or the TLSA resource record itself was not manipulated by a man in the middle type of attack. So let's take a look at how a TLS connection basically works. So typically when I type up an IP address in my web browser, first step is the resolver is going to issue a DNS query to look up the IP address for that given website, www.example.com. Okay, I get an answer back from DNS. It's on 192.0.2.54. And so my device is now able to make a connection to that IP address. And so it presents through opening an HTTPS connection, presents a certificate, goes through the TLS handshake, they negotiate the keys and the capabilities, and then they can basically sign information to encrypt that data connection, providing the security. The problem is that with the TLS man in the middle attack, again, if someone impersonates a certificate or uh, is able to establish a bogus certificate as validated, as appearing validated, now I can make that connection if the attacker is sitting on the 192.0.2.54 IP address and is able to provide a response back and begin the TLS handshake before the legitimate site, for example. It can actually be construed as that end destination website and the web browser can be basically tricked into believing that, so to speak, so that you're connecting to a site which is an imposter site. And of course, with an imposter site, various forms of attack can be engaged with respect to smearing your brand or providing misinformation to more nefarious means of dropping malware, collecting sensitive information, proxying that to your website, and listening or watching for traffic, collecting credentials, 
and things of that nature. So the man in the middle attack is quite dangerous. So the ability of an attacker to impose a fake certificate that is construed as reality is a certain is certainly a danger to your website's integrity. So the TLSA resource record type enables you to specify information with respect to your certificate that you use on your web server. Uh, there's basically four fields within the TLSA RR type, certificate usage, certificate selectors, matching types, and then the data itself, which is based on the first three fields. The certificate usage can be either the specification of the certificate authority, the certificate specification as issued by a valid CA, so the way it rolls up through a, a, a CA that's in your browser, for example, a trust anchor specification, or the domain issued certificate itself. The full certificate can be provided using the certificate selector field depending on the value there, or just the subject public key information, the SPKI, can be in the data field as well. And then whether that is hashed or not, the various hash types are provided. So basically the browser will get back the certificate from the web server, compare that with the information in the TLSA, perform the appropriate operations on this TLS information back to compare it with what's in the TLSA RR type, and then if it matches, you can consider that server the legitimate server of that domain and make the connection. If not, it can consider that bogus and not allow that connection. So with a Dane configured browser, the process ensues where I look up the IP address once again, get the IP address, and then I can now query for the TLSA information. That didn't come back as well. That's DNSX sign, so I can validate that that is as published by the domain administrator. And now when I attempt to make the connection, if I have a man in the middle, I'm basically getting back the TLS information that doesn't match what's in the TLSA, and I can thereby reject that connection as bogus. So TLSA gives me a great way to really corroborate the certificate information that the browser should be getting back from the web server. The data is not just for the web, it can certainly be used for any type of TLS connection. So wherever you're using that, web connections obviously, but also for email, voice over IP, Jabber, XMPP, um, and then Dane is specified originally in 6698 RFC, was updated by 7218, and there's some additional applications specified in 7671 through 73. So hopefully Dane can help you secure your connections by publishing corroborating DLS information in the DNS.